Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench here. Uh, this is Dan as always, and in this video I'm going to be go, uh, going and showing you guys how to weather a molten sulfur tank car. Uh, I think you guys will particularly enjoy this one. I'm going to show you guys a few techniques on weathering one of the yellow cars. Uh, and these are uh, interesting cars in the way they weather, and I'll point out a few things to you guys on how, how they look and how to basically represent one of these. Uh, I've done them before, so I've kind of know ahead of time how to do some of this stuff, but I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys how to actually do one of these so you guys can model them accurately on your layout. Uh, so we'll go ahead and zoom in here. I'll show you guys the model, and then I'll show you guys the prototype, and then we'll go through the various things that you'll need to do to the model, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I'll, I'll show you guys the uh, materials, obviously, that I use uh, from the acrylics, the chalks, the powders that I use to actually weather the model, and uh, we'll go from there. So hopefully uh, this will be helpful to you guys, and hopefully you'll enjoy it at the same time. So let's get started. So here we have the car, or the canvas, if you will, that we'll be working on today. This is TCPX 742, one of the uh, popular yellow painted uh, 14K Trinity Sulfur cars. And this is one of the recent releases from Walther's uh, in the Proto line. Uh, they recently did this paint scheme, and I'm really glad they did recently because uh, all the other cars that they did prior were older cars. Uh, so what you saw in a lot of these newer, on the... Uh, really the cars in the more modern day was that they did a lot of uh, stencil modifications like you see here and uh, they obviously put safety stripes on them and all that so uh, a few things changed on a lot of these later cars so I'm glad Walthers did this uh, there will obviously still be a couple things we'll have to do and I'll point them out here in a sec uh, but overall I like these Walthers cars because these are very highly detailed they have all the underbody detailing and though it is not photo etched or wire or anything like that uh, the plastic parts still do a, a pretty good job representing the details uh, so they, they look good at the same. They look good, uh, to say the least. Obviously, the hatch detail, the fine wire parts are are really good. Uh, the only thing that is uh, I don't particularly like about these cars is the fact that the wheels are kind of hard to weather because they're stainless steel. Obviously, uh, so this is kind of hard. It's kind of hard to weather these, and it's uh, one of the th reasons why you need to have a good dull coat on these. That way, you have some sort of tooth to the shiny, uh, basically really slippery metal. Uh, so I'll also show you guys that uh, when we get to it, but the other thing that's uh, not accurate about these cars, and this this might not uh, bother too many people, but for prototype modelers who model, you know, obviously, and keep up with modern requirements on these cars, uh, all tank cars in the present day are required to have double shelf couplers. Uh, Walther's did not put double shelf couplers on these, they put their own brand, I think they're called Accumate, uh, and they're basically like a, an imitation KD coupler, where it's basically a big, wide, uh, fat kind of coupler, you know, with a operating knuckle and spring and all that. All that. Uh, so, this is one thing that I'm going to have to change on this particular car, and again, it might not be something you necessarily want to do, uh, it's kind of up to you, it's your call on this, but if you want to be prototypical like I do, obviously with this particular car, you may want to change these couplers out with uh, either KD products, but in this particular case I'm going to be using McHenry couplers since I kind of like the McHenry couplers, and uh, obviously how they look, the scale size, uh, so that's your call as well. Uh, but like I said, overall, very, very nice model, highly detailed, and I'm uh, very glad Walters did uh, this this uh, new road, because I see these TCPX cars quite often here in Ohio, as a matter of fact, on a lot of CSX and Norfolk Southern trains, uh, so uh, this makes a really good model to start with, obviously. Uh, the only thing I can say about them is I kind of wish uh, Walters uh, did a few more numbers on these, because they usually only do one or two numbers per uh, per run, which is kind of annoying. But uh, I mean, I don't really, I, I don't really buy these cars in bulk. But for someone who buy the, who really buys more than one of these, uh, obviously changing numbers in that is a requirement. So, uh, other than that, the model's still really good, and it's a very good representation of the pro, of the uh, uh, basically a model of the prototype. Uh, so, well, go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys now uh, some prototype pictures to show you guys actually how you, how these are weathered and what I'll all be doing to it. So, uh, we'll go ahead and keep moving. Okay, so here we have a picture of the real TCPX 742, and this is off of Railroad Picture Archives, which is a great uh, online site, uh, which pretty much archives all these uh, rail cars. You can usually find the photos of these cars pretty easily, and uh, so it makes it definitely a lot easier uh, when trying to actually model one. But the things I want to point out about this particular car, uh, notice the weathering on them. Uh, it's a very interesting kind of a weathering that you saw on these particular cars, where the... On a, Really what you saw was the yellow paint kind of faded down a little bit and then you got this kind of this grimy halo 
at the top here where kind of the majority of it covers the top of the car and then you, as you get to the bottom kind of where the reporting marks are located and where all this car data is you see this yellow or the basically the uh, where the grime ends and you can see kind of the actual paint color it's kind of cleaner at the bottom which is I, I find very interesting excuse me and uh, and then as you get to the bottom then you see the uh, kick up which pretty much covers the entire underbody of these cars it's a pretty pretty uh, fine spray as you can see and then it kind of fans out uh, towards the top here just right above this railing which I also find very interesting of the weathering uh, now also as we get to this uh, top hatch here you can see we have some of the rust streaks uh, starting at the top here uh, around this uh, obviously around these uh, walkways and around the hatch you get this rust so this is something else that we're going to want to concentrate on now also as you look at the uh, car body you'll notice that the uh, uh, panel lines as you can see here notice how they're darker and this is where the grime obviously picks up in these panel lines and, it, and you can see it really stands out and this is something this is what really I find it makes or breaks these models I've seen people do the weathering pretty accurately but then they don't do the uh, the panel lines like this and then it just it just doesn't look right so this is one of the things that you need to do if you want to do an accurate looking sulfur car like this uh, so that's another thing that I'll obviously do and how I'm gonna do it on the model and how you may want to consider doing it as well is to do this the panel lines first before you do any other weathering on the car body because uh, quite frankly uh, it's not really a, a good idea uh, to go over with paint or put masking tape over all the weathering that you've just done to do these lines so it's always a good idea to do this the the panel lines first on a car like this uh, so I'll obviously show you guys how to do that uh, as we get to the trucks here you can see pretty much the standard grime coat on the wheels a very kind of a flat grimy earth color which will be made from a combination of black and a, kind of an earth brown color the wheels standard earth brown on these and you can see it's uh, pretty much about the same on both trucks Obviously, as you can see, we have the double shelf couplers on the ends. Now, another thing that I want to point out, you can see the safety stripes. And in this particular photo, this isn't very recent, but it's from a few years back. So obviously, uh, uh, how I'm going to be doing it is in the modern day. So I'm going to be uh, weathering this a little bit heavier, just slightly heavier than what you see in this photo. But it's still about the same overall. Uh, but I'm going to actually save the safety stripes for last. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to apply these because I don't want to weather these. Because as you can see, they're pretty clean on this car. As it, as it looks right here <coughs> excuse me and uh, another very important thing here as you can see notice the new stenciling from the 2448 number for the sulfur and then the molten sulfur stencil itself and then the new car data for the tank itself this is all very clean also the uh, car data or the lube stencil here is very clean as well so what we're going to be wanting to do on the model itself is we're going to want to take tape and mask these new stencils off because these are very clean as you can see the whole car body itself is very dirty but the stencils stay pretty clean because these are relatively new so we're going to try to keep these clean with a little bit of by basically putting masking tape over uh, to represent that also you'll notice that these two little clean dots here uh, where you got these rust spots I'll be doing those obviously to the real car or to the model itself obviously now I don't have any other photos of this car but this is a, a good reference for the both sides of the car this is it's pretty much going to about pretty much look the same on both sides but uh, I have another photo here that I'm going to use to show you guys the ends here and I'll go ahead and pull it up here this is a sister car this is a TCPX 774 and as you can see this is a little bit more modern <coughs> but again you'll notice the patching and the stenciling is all still pretty clean in this photo and again you can see the attention to the dirty panel lines and then you got the kick up spray on the end which as you can see is uh, pretty uh, pretty pronounced you can see that pretty clean on the car it's, it stands out really well and I get a lot of comments actually from a couple guys who say that uh, the kick up never goes that high on the tank end and uh, well there's your proof right there guys that's why I do it like I do so as you can see uh, another thing I'm going to be doing you can see at some point in time they uh, removed or basically removed the original 2448 uh, sulfur does it, uh, sulfur hazmat number and you can see there's a, a, a grimy patch so I'm going to also represent that on my model too with a, a custom color of paint which will paint a little square on there uh, when we get around to it but uh, other than that you can see pretty much like I said I wanted to point out the kick up in particular then you got the all the grime on the underbody and all that so we'll go ahead and get started here on this project uh, with a little bit of dull coat <coughs> 
Alright, so real quick I'm going to show you guys this sink full of hot water here. And the reason I have a sink full of hot water is to put my clear coat can in, which this is Tester's Doll Coat. You can get this at any hobby shop store. You can get this online. Uh, really any craft store or anything like that is going to carry this, like Hobby Lobby, anything like that. But the reason I put this in hot water is to help build pressure in the can. That way the spray is basically a much more powerful spray. It's not so much, uh, well, let me explain. I, don't, I find that the, uh, shaking the can necessarily doesn't build enough pressure uh, and the spray can be a little kind of uneven as you hold the, hold the spray down. Even if you're going, uh, really putting an even coat or you're going over the model very, very slowly and evenly, it can still leave a relatively uneven uh, application of clear coat. So what I like to do is build up the pressure in the can by putting the can in hot water and again just to build up the pressure so that the spray is a little bit more even and uh, it'll be a little bit more powerful. So. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind when doing this is obviously that'll be coming out uh, when you obviously spray the clear coat. It'll be coming out a little stronger, so you may want to go over the model a little quicker, and I'll, I'll demonstrate it as we get to it. But for now, we're going to let that sit for about 10 minutes, and in the meantime, I'm going to change the couplers out on the model. Okay, so we have the car here, as you can see, and like I said, I want to change these couplers out. So what I have here is a set of the McHenry scale double shelf couplers that you need for this car. And uh, I've upgraded these with KD Springs just because I, I personally like the KD Springs because they're a little bit more stiffer, obviously because they're a little longer than the McHenry Springs. So they have a little, a little bit, they're a little bit stronger and stiffer, so they hold the knuckle in place better, uh, so it's not kind of bouncing out or anything like that. So I'm going to be using these for the car, but uh, I'm also going to go ahead and show you guys the inner thing here. Uh, obviously, I got to remove the coupler box but in order to get access to the coupler box we're gonna to have to remove the truck and this is okay anyways too just because I'm gonna actually take these wheels off uh, in the first place so we can get to the underbody weathering uh, in a sec so I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the truck here and I'm gonna unscrew the coupler box this is a little hard to do uh, trying to hold the camera <laughs> okay, so you can see, just drop that out, and I'm just going to do the swap by taking the McHenry coupler, putting it in there, and I'm going to put the coupler box lid back over it and screw it back in place. So you can see, pretty simple swap, and that looks ten times better, as you can see, than using these. So, I'm going to go ahead and do this to the other side here, and then we'll go ahead and apply our dull coat finish. Okay, so I have a cutting pad laid out here, and uh, this is for my workbench, obviously. Uh, normally, I use a spray booth uh, to do all my clear coating uh, in a well-ventilated area, uh, but in this particular case, since I don't have it with me right now, I'm just going to go ahead and use it out here on my patio. Um, I have the car right here, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to coat the underbody with the dull coat and then we'll flip it back over and spray the sides and ends and all that uh, so you'll kind of see how I do it. We have our can here which has been soaking in the water for about 10 minutes now. So I'm just going to give it a quick shake here. And first things first, I'm going to do a test spray. Bottom here. So, real quick, do the bottom just like this. Excuse me. And then I have the trucks. I'm going to take and put his back on its trucks real quick and now I'm going to do the ends and both sides you see that's a nice even coating of dull coat all over the model and now we're going to let this set for a couple minutes uh, over off camera I'm actually going to take the model off of these trucks and I'm going to give these trucks a good coating of dull coat themselves uh, so we'll come back to that in a second okay so as I mentioned before I'm actually going to act um, I'm actually going to mask off the uh, patching that was done to the car that I showed you the molten sulfur stenciling and the car data for example uh, I'm going to mask that off with some blue painters tape and I'm using uh, this clean release uh, duct tape here as you can see you can use scotch blue painters tape anything like that whatever you particularly use uh, but the one thing I'm going to say is never trust the factory edge though it looks clean and smooth in reality it's not this can get beat up pretty good it can get uh, bent and stuff so it's not a true straight line so it's always a good idea to take a straight edge of some sort whether it's plastic metal wood and just cut a clean straight edge 
to start with. So we're going to go ahead and remove this strip here. And now you can take and cut out your strips <coughs> that you need. So I'm going to cut out a few squares and a few strips to cover up the car data. And I'll show you here in a second as I apply it to the model. Okay, so I got the strips of tape cut to their individual sizes. And I'm going to go ahead and apply these to the model to cover up these uh, stencils. See, I covered the one number up top. I'm not going to do the one on the bottom because the one on the bottom is actually older, so I'm going to leave that be. And then I'm going to cover up the molten sulfur vinyl graphic here. Very carefully, you can see. I want to get this in the exact position. I don't want this to be sloppy looking. Let's see. Just going to kind of edge it into the final position. And lastly, I'm going to cover this uh, data with a bigger piece, uh, bigger piece of tape here. I'm just going to cover it. There we go. Okay, so as usual, I've got my uh, typical layout of weathering products that I'll be using today. Obviously, the majority of the work will be done with uh, wet paints, and in this particular case, i got my Anita's acrylic paints. You can get these at uh, any good craft store. I got these from Hobby Lobby, so uh, uh, like I said, you can pretty much find these or a similar brand of paint uh, at your local craft store or even a hobby shop. Um, the colors I'm going to be using are Anita's acrylic, are the earth brown, and my black. And uh, these two colors mixed together make a really good grime coat, as I've mentioned before. I'll also be using uh, my chalk pestles, uh, primarily these two colors here. My bright rust, and then my earthy, uh, kind of a rusty tone. Uh, these will be able to, be able to do some uh, nice dusty rust effects when we get, to, uh, when we get around to them. Uh, the brushes I'll be using, obviously I'll be using my... A uh, large camel hairbrush here uh, to do the majority of the truck work, like painting the side frames and the axles themselves. Uh, this brush here I'll be using primarily for the chalks when we get to them, so we'll go ahead and set that aside. Uh, I got my fine tip brush here, and I'll be using this to do all the detail weathering, uh, like the rust streaks, the rust spots, uh, stuff like that when we get to it. Now I also have these two brushes here and again I'll be using these uh, pretty much for the kick up effects on the bottom and the areas where the grime is particularly concentrated in a certain area. So these will be uh, used mostly for the underbody weathering when we get to it. Okay so as I showed you in the photos you remember that the panel lines were a nice dark brown color. What we're going to do is do these first as I mentioned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap each individual one of these lines and the surrounding area around the lines with a fine band of our blue masking tape here. and You just want to carefully uh, center these just around the line here. And I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see exactly how I'm positioning these. If I can get it. Okay. Take note of the line and then take note of how I'm positioning the tape here. Just right at the border of that line and then I'm going to wrap the tape strip all the way around this uh, band here. I'm going to apply the other one now and again just positioning in it right against that line. Nah, that's the wrong side. Ah! I don't want the bad side. I want the good side. Here we go. Okay. Again, put it right against that line. Make it a really nice, clean, fine line. And then wrap it like this. Wrap it. As you can see, like this. So as you can see, I got this band masked off, and basically I'm going to take the paint and just go over this. Uh, and I'm going to use straight earth brown for it. Uh, depending on how heavy the lines are, you can even mix on a little black, which I might do if I have to here, but I'm, for now I'm just going to use the straight earth brown. Now I've only masked one line as you can see, but you can actually do all these ahead of time, which would uh, actually save you a little time. Uh, for me, I'm just going to do the one line right now, and then I'll show you guys... Uh, once I get this one done, I'll take the masking off and we'll move on to the next and I'll show you guys how that looks after we're done. 
So I'll go ahead and get a little paint on the brush and I'm just going to go ahead and start painting these lines just like this. Just want to be patient with this. Don't try to layer a whole bunch of paint on at the same time. If you have to go back and add an additional layer of paint, then do so. Uh, just like I said, take your time and be patient with this. Uh, the, sweating the details here will really make the model look nice, trust me. Alright, so I went ahead and painted this line twice. And uh, I'm just going to basically be doing this for the rest of these panel lines. But uh, to show you guys how nice this looks, go ahead and remove the masking tape. <coughs> And basically, now if I can get it out here, actually, there we go. This is essentially what we're going for. That's nice darkened panel line effect. All the way around on the underbody, too. So I'll come back in a little bit to show you guys how all these look once they're done. And so now we have the finished panel lines. As you can see, they covered pretty well. And they look a little sloppy, I know, but this is kind of what you want because these aren't clean lines in the first place to begin with. So now the next step of this uh, process, uh, as usual, I like to start on tank cars particularly from the bottom, uh, and I like to work basically my way up to the top. So we're going to go ahead and start working on the bottom of this car here in the next step. 